Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. New to the Flame 2025.1 update is an exciting addition to the Time Warp node, bringing us the latest and greatest in machine learning, allowing us to create smooth and seamless speed changes now natively inside of Flame. In this video, we'll be going over everything you need to know about the new machine learning Time Warp, where to find it, how to use it, and how it works. You'll be able to use the new machine learning time warp feature anywhere you can find Flames time warp. Inside of Batch with the time warp node, on the desktop under Tools, Clip, and Time Warp, or on the timeline using Time Warp Timeline Effects. Regardless of where you access it, the interface is the same. If you switch the default interpolation type from Mix, you'll find the new machine learning option, which will work with whichever type of time warp you do, whether it's timing, speed, or duration. Once that's set, when you hit Render, Flame will initialize the machine learning engine and then start to render the frames. Linux users will find an additional engine cache option, which is generated per resolution and GPU combination, allowing users with the appropriate graphics card to take advantage of NVIDIA's tensor cores, helping to significantly increase inference speed. In terms of how to use it, that's about it. Once you've set the time warp settings and set it to machine learning, you're ready to go. But once you start using Flame's machine learning time warp in your projects, you might start to notice that sometimes it renders relatively quickly, and other times it takes quite a bit longer. To understand why, we'll need to dive a little bit deeper into how things are working under the hood. The trained model is designed to create smooth transitions between frames by predicting intermediate frames halfway between existing frames using machine learning. Let's look at some examples. If we want to do a 50% time warp, the algorithm begins by generating intermediate frames between two consecutive original frames. It does this by estimating the motion between frames and predicting new frames that should appear in between. In the case of taking a normal speed clip, this of course results in a clip whose speed is adjusted to 50%. Once the 50% speed clip is created, if that's the speed that we're going for, then we're done. But if we're looking to do a 25% time warp, for example, then the 50% speed clip serves as the new reference point. The algorithm performs an additional round of interpolation, starting from the 50% speed clip, generating frames that are halfway between each frame of the 50% speed clip. This process halves the speed again, getting us to our 25% time warp. If we needed to go the other direction, say a 75% speed clip, the algorithm looks at the 50% speed clip and interpolates the frames that are positioned halfway between the 50% speed frames and the original 100% speed frames. What all of this means to you comes down to render times. When it comes to generating new frames, a 50% time warp will always be the fastest, since it's just one interpolation calculation. A 25% time warp will be a little slower than a 50% time warp, since it's performing two jumps, one to 50% and one to 25%. If you see what I'm getting at, then getting to a time warp of, for example, 51%, even though it might seem like it's just going 1% faster than a 50% time warp, it actually involves going from 50% to 75% to 62.5% to 56.25% to 53.125% to 51.56% to 50.78% and finally to 51.17%, which for argument's sake, we can say rounds nicely to 51%. However long that initial 50% time warp would take, a 51% time warp would take roughly eight times longer to calculate. Now that you understand how the algorithm works, you can be a bit more informed about the decisions you're making when using the machine learning time warp. Maybe choosing to drop that 51% time warp down to a 50% time warp to save a whole bunch of time. But at the end of the day, this understanding will help you to better anticipate render times and hopefully adjust your workflow for the best results when working on your projects. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.